Hi, it's Rachel Maldonado, and I am with Alex Craner, and we are talking about the masculinity crisis. Alex, do you think that there's a crisis? Uh, depends where you look. Depends where you look. I think that where you sit, there is a crisis. Uh, I, you know, um, I occasionally participate in these things called Eurasia Integration Conferences, yeah? So uh, I I go to conferences that happen in uh, Azerbaijan and uh, Kyrgyzstan and places like this. I, I, I travel to Russia a little bit. Um, and uh, over there, believe it or not, men are men and women are women. And nobody even talks about anything other than that. You know, like that's kind of like taken for granted. So we talk about other things. Nobody talks about all this hysteria about, uh, you know, how it's uncool to be, to have toxic masculinity and how we all have to be um, less manly. Uh, it's just regarded as completely silly. And I, I'm sad to say that people from abroad, when they look at the United States, they kind of feel uh, sorry for what's going on because it's it came out of nowhere you know it wasn't in the United States either like 30, 20 30 years ago so it's just like they started pumping it into into the into the people's minds and creating a hysteria for whatever whatever their purpose is but yeah it's you know long story short yes there is a crisis but it's localized mm. Alex I'm super curious can you tell me what are the men like in Europe and abroad? Can you, I know it's a very broad question, but can you tell me? I, you know, it's one of those things that I don't give a whole lot of thought, particularly because I don't spend a lot of time thinking about men. I spend a lot of, a lot more time thinking about women <laughs> and paying attention to women yeah uh men i guess you know i i i was an athlete i did sports so you know i don't know men are men are men i don't know uh men are men. It's know, just we such have a, a stupid question in a way like you say like you know yeah be, because believe me if this weren't an issue it would just be just be one of those things that you take for granted you know uh and so you know, men are, have a certain wiring and a certain constitution. You know, we are heavier and stronger than women. I know some people's heads are going to explode over this, but that's just how it is. And not just in human species, you know, like the average lion uh, weighs uh, about 180 kilos. So what's that about uh, 380 pounds? And the average lioness weighs about 120 kilos. And that's uh, what, 200 to 250 pounds. So there's a difference. And it's not because uh, the lions uh, the, the subjected the lionesses to uh, a, a, an evil patriarchy. It's just like how nature builds, builds things, you know. And so we are a bit more expendable than women. So we go to work in coal mines and we go man the trawlers and spend days and days on the ocean catching fish uh, we go hunting we go to war we do things like that where women are a bit uh, more homebound because they are meant to be taking care of the home and the children right and so men are also by the way we're wired we are more risk seeking whereas women are more risk averse so there are real differences. And I, you know, I guess if you ask me what are men like, then by nature, they're like that, you know, they're a bit more adventurous, a bit more risk seeking, a bit more willing to suffer the consequences, uh, a bit more likely to end up fighting in a war, um, a bit more likely to fight between themselves as well. With one massive difference is that men, when they fight other men, they don't have any trouble talking to those men afterwards and even having a drink with them and even becoming friends. Whereas women, if they ever fight, it's probably uh, broken bridges for good. 
Yeah, and that's you know I, I'm not I'm not talking out of my back end. This is actually empirical uh, empirical fact. Do and you so, think that women are a little bit more vicious mentally, and men are a little bit more vicious physically? You know, the men will have a drink after a fight. The women they won't talk to each other after a fight. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think there's something to this because you know if you if you if you're if you're if you're at a disadvantage in in on on the physical plane, then you have to do a, a psyops, right? So men often get a picture with no sound, right? <laughs> Wait, uh, catch me up to speed. What? You know, like when you when when the woman refuses to talk to you, then we call it picture with no sound. <laughs> Oh, Alex, I had never heard of that. Oh, okay. Oh, it's wow. A, it's wow. a common thing we say, you know, like when, uh, so, you know, like when guys talk between themselves and then they say like, so how's the, how's everything at home? And they go like, yeah, I got the picture, but no sounds. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's so interesting. And then as a man, in some ways, do you understand the men and women? It's a little bit harder to figure out. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. You know, men uh, men are a lot more predictable, and women are uh, uh, are a mystery. You know, genuinely, and I spend my lifetime uh, trying to untangle that mystery. And I've I, I I think I've untangled it part partially, but you know, it's not like um, it's not like you have all the answers ever quite, you know, and also, you know, personalities differ. Some people are more uh, open. Other people are less open. Some are more introverted. Some are, some are less, intro less introverted. Some are bipolar. Some are not. <laughs> uh, some are very, very jealous and possessive. Others are not. And uh, so, you know, you're always de dealing with a different person in different circumstances. And then I don't know if men are quite as mysterious to women, but I, I kind of tend to think that we are very simple things, men, you know. Uh, what do you mean about, I'm very curious, what do you mean about the predictable? Men are predictable. Can you explain that piece? Well, I think that there's a limited repertoire of things that make us happy, things that make us unhappy, things that make us angry things that make us cheerful and uh it's almost um it's not mechanical but almost you know like i don't know or universal I... a lot of men like this a universal yeah yeah, yeah exactly like you, you can know, explain like, so, men uh, in a way yes 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 and mm -hmm. what are the top three universal characteristics that things men like or want or need well obviously men like sex right yes mm -hmm. number one <laughs> uh men like uh sports number two you know, a competition rivalry you know mm -hmm. and men like i th i believe that men like uh orderliness mm, number three oh you know uh, because you know maybe you know, uh, a man child maybe lives a messy life, but if you go to like like a guy who who likes to fix cars, example, yes. if you go and you see his garage, you'll see that all the tools will be, you know, in their in their proper place with the label. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do the same. You know, I don't I don't fix cars, but let's say other things I I really need order around myself. And I see that a lot of guys do the same. And it's even to the point that it's such a stereotype that I saw a video once on Facebook, which showed the difference between men and women. And one of them is like the man's desktop on computer is just like a small handful of, um, how do you call it? Icons. Icons. And everything is clean, but his desk is a complete mess. And then it shows a woman's computer where like the whole desktop is covered in icons but her desk is practically, you know, like a piece of paper and a pencil and nothing else on it. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, you could, you could probably write many books about these things. And, uh, 
I'm just, uh, you know, I'm trying to formulate my impressions, but, you know, living in Europe and living in Monaco, which is not a democracy, it's a principality, uh, these issues are among, you know, like if you almost, almost to the point where if you ask the fish, so what do you think about water? You'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? Yes. Well, okay. That may be true that European men or whatever, they're so masculine over in Europe. But what about you said that, you know, there's the man child and from developing for masculinity, this could be universal. Even if you think the men in Europe are, you know, more masculine, what do you think about that? This escalation to becoming a man. I think it's just a natural process. And I think that a, a, a man remains immature or in unfor unfinished, you know, un, un, underdeveloped if he is... Uh, overly pampered, overly protected, overly um, hovered over by by their caretakers, by the, their parents, whoever. And then also I think that our education system is starting to work against men's um, full realization of their, you know, manhood. And the, because they, 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 they now... Um, they now keep telling us all this stuff about to toxic masculinity and about all these genders and. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for laughing. The genders. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I I see that there you know in France in Monaco it's not it's not so strong but I have friends in the UK in Britain where they say it's it's absolutely horrible you know it's it's um it's full on. And so I, I see that it's happening in the United States, it's happening in, in uh, parts of Europe, uh, like the UK, Ireland, I think, also to a good extent. And I think that, you know, kids, when they're in their teenage years, they're already a little bit confused, you yes. know? They already are, you know, not sure about so many things. And then if you if you add confusion on top of that, confusion which is already there, then you're you're unhelping them. You know, you, you men need to go into sports. They need to compete. They need to be mm. physically active every day. You know, I I played water polo. I was in the swimming pool two hours a day every day when I was from the from the time when I was uh, fourteen until the the age of eighteen. So I was uh, two hours a day in the pool with the other guys beating each other up underwater, you know, uh, playing games, trying to win, trying not to lose, competing, exercising, trying to be in good shape, traveling together, shooting shit together, insulting one another, fighting, teasing one another. And, and you know, like that kind of forms you. And if you're just kept, you know, here's a video game, here, play Fortnite eight hours a day, watch TV, um, be weird, and then you know maybe all of those faculties don't don't actually get activated, and then you end up getting weirdos. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the competition—that's a factor that helps the boys and men, of course, are competitive too. What does that do? What does the competition do? Why is it so helpful for masculinity? Well, because you already have a lot of energy that needs to be expanded, mm. and 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 you know, like if you, if you, okay, here's another thing about men that I also find in myself. We need a project always. Oh, interesting. You know, like we need a we need a goal to work towards, and yes. I've seen uh, I've seen that men who don't have that tend to kind of uh, grow depressed. You mm. know, like I. You know, like for example, people who, uh, people who, very early in their life master everything that they that, that there is their life, and then you're just turning up to do the same things and going mm -hmm. home, and it's always the same things. Uh, they tend to kind of lose that uh, joie de vivre. You know, they 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 kind of get dull. Even they get they get dull. They lose the and edge. 
they lose the edge and even even uh, in some cases in many cases they get, get depressed and so i think that sports in your youth gives you something to work it gives you that objective because mm. you think like yeah. oh i could be good at this or i want to be better at this and so it gives you a reason to turn up at the practice every day and to do your best and to measure your times and to keep score of how many goals you scored you know and and how many times you win and 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 you know like the next tournament hopefully our team wins and yes. and, and so and i think that that kind of keeps you sharp that keeps you uh, engaged and then it's a, it you know like if you if you have some success yes and let's say your team wins a tournament that's a beautiful bonding ex, bonding um experience and those friendships last, last a lifetime. I mean, like my water polo, I, I, I haven't played water polo now 35 years, right? Yes. But the guys still get together periodically and sit down and have dinners. And, you know, they talk like they've been together all of these days, you know, like yes. like nothing ever happened in yes. between, you know, it's that, 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 that camaraderie, that closeness is still there. It never goes away. And it's a beautiful thing. It's li really like a, like a lifetime's gift. So, you know, I, I obviously wish that for my children, but I also wish it to all the men because, yes. you know, that's, that's what forms you and gives you these lifetime long, lifelong friendships. And, you know, believe me, if you need something in life, these people will always uh, prove, um, they'll always be there for you. They, they are, they're always happy to help. They know you, they know who you yes. are. They played sports with you. Mm. They trust you. Yes. So if you need to maybe borrow some money or need some help with that or whatever, if you, you do some little business transaction, it's very easy because they mm. trust you. And, you know, this competition that is very intrinsic, does it help to develop the competence? And you need that competence. Do they yes. all go together, the competition, competence oh, yeah. and competence? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'll I'll give you I'll give you a perfect example from from martial arts. Okay, so because I I used to practice Aikido for um, mm -hmm. about ten years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so you know you go there, you do the exercises, and you know then the instructor tells you don't do this, don't do this. Like stand like this, stand like this. If you if you stand like this, I could hit you. <laughs> you know? And then you go like ah oh, yeah, yeah okay, of course of course. But then you don't really, and then he gets like, careful, again, you're exposing yourself, I can hit you. Well, guess what? Once he actually does hit you, then you're not going to make that mistake anymore. And it happened to me, you know, like my instructor was always like, careful, I could hit you now, don't do it like this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. And then the next time again, and he's like, look, I could hit you. Well, once he actually punched me in the face, I was like, whoa, what was that, you know? <laughs> but I never made that mistake again. Mm. So, you know, it's uh, the the competition. Yes. Whether it's martial arts, whether it's football, whether it's uh, whatever it is, it's real, you know? Yeah. It's real and it, you, you, you gain something from it, from it which you couldn't gain if you were just uh, going through the motions without a real purpose and, and uh, without real risks and real rewards, you know, i.e. getting a punch in the face, you know, that's a very good uh, teaching moment. Mm, yes. And so it matters, the competition, it actually affects you and it shapes you. But you mentioned the camaraderie and sometimes people are very narrow focused in how they, you know, think of men. And even though you said certain things make men happy, that could be predictable. Even so, camaraderie, you mentioned how important this is and actually connection, camaraderie it matters to men oh yeah oh yeah very much so very much so and it's uh uh i don't know you know you uh, you, you feel you feel a certain bond with people you know like 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 it, like it's almost becomes tribal you know like they're Ooh. they're your group you you belong you know we all have a deep need to belong somewhere and yeah. you get a sense of belonging out of this you know and it's a uh, 
it's a very gratifying feeling to, you know, know that you're among your friends, that you are, you're all together in something that you all have the same shared sense of purpose, you know, and that each one of you has an important part to contribute to that purpose. And that, you know, if you're falling short, they're, they're going to help you out. If somebody else is falling short, you can help them out. Uh, it's it, it, it's beautiful. It's it's really a, it's really what life is all about. And, you know, when I told you what 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 makes me what keeps me alive uh, is love. I, I mean that not only love between a man and a woman, I mean, love in general, you know, love towards your 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 kin, your family, your friends, um, love for life and the world and, and and all of these and i think that you get a lot of that in those kinds of relationships you know uh, where you know like you're part of a group that shares a common purpose and that is you know people always say like that they get this very strong feeling of of uh joy when they sense that they are part of something bigger than themselves mm. well that's what you get when you're a uh, uh, part of some sports team and then you have like real trials and real rewards and real risks and risk uh, and real failures as well what would be a recommendation that you would have for the young guys for the men you know what was something that helped you or that you learned from your experience what helps the men for this masculinity that you need this purpose well, obviously, you know, do participate in team sports if you can. Basketball, yes. football. I don't know. You know, I, I never figured out baseball and I couldn't figure out why, why Americans like baseball, but <laughs> I guess baseball as well. Uh, but, you know, things like that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then I would also say uh, don't hesitate too much. You know, mm. all, all life is all life is an adventure. Uh, you're gonna get you're gonna have your share of failure in life don't hesitate you know just if you feel that something is worthwhile go for it and make peace with the fact that you might fail that's okay uh, sometimes some okay so in my life many times failures came as blessings in disguise oh wow you know yes and so, you know, at the moment when you fail because you had certain expectations and then they you didn't meet those expectations and you feel bad, but then that failure ended up leading to something else. And then you go like, oh my God, you know, like that failure there was probably the best thing that could have happened to me at that moment. So, you know, always have faith that nothing is for nothing. There's a, there's a good reason for everything. And in my life, I had many, many moments like this where actually failure did more to build me up as a, as a man than success. Okay. Ooh, so it's venture, whatever you think is, 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 is worthwhile, go for it. And when you fail, embrace that failure because it's leading you down your path towards better things it's making you stronger it's making you better and it's refining you little by little through life you know uh, okay so i like to use this metaphor you know because um they say that it takes a lot of abrasive action to polish up a diamond right oh yes and they also say that for a for a for a shell to create a pearl you have to you have to put a piece of you have to put a grain of sand in it which is an irritant, right? Yeah. And then, and then the the shell creates a pearl around it. So you know these these trials, this this, this bruising experiences, they're necessary. They they form us. We we have to mm. we have to go towards them, and we have to embrace them, and we have to take the consequences, and refine ourselves through the process and keep moving on. Mm. You fight fear. Don't be afraid of failure. This is what will help you be a man. Uh, yes, exactly. You know, fear is temporary. Oh. Regrets are forever. Oh, wow, that's good. Can you say more about that? Well, yeah, because uh, fear is a very natural, normal reaction. You know, because we all, uh, we all appreciate being safe. Yes. 
And we all like, you know, if things stay exactly as they are, I know where I'm at. I know what I can expect. I feel safe. I feel comfortable. And so there's always a part of you that wants to stay safe and comfortable. Yeah. Except that there's that part of you that wants to venture, that wants to learn new things, that wants to see other parts of the world, that wants to achieve something and so forth. So, you know, like something always pushes you to go beyond that. And so the fear of going beyond is natural, but the courage, courage is a decision. Oh, do you know? So fear is natural and normal. Courage is a decision that at some point you say like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yes. And then you move beyond your, your safe bubble and you go towards something new and uh, things might go well, things might not go well, but your, your life is, your life is unfolding and you are growing as a person. You're growing stronger, wiser, more experienced and more capable uh, little by little. And, and the more experiences you had in life, yeah. the more interesting you're going to be as a person, you know? You're gonna have stuff to tell your grandchildren, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have lessons that you'll be able to teach them. If you spend your life playing Fortnite, you're not you're you're not gonna have very much to offer at all, not to your kids, grandkids, not to anybody. You know, you mentioned that you have something to offer, tied in with the purpose. Is that very integral? You know, to be a man, you got to do something with your life. You have to have a reason for the things that you do. Well, yes, and you have to be useful to your community and to your family. You know, you have to be of service. We uh, That's practically the whole thing about about life. You, you, yes. you're, you're meant to be of service to your group. Mm. You're not meant to be useless, useless. And, and a drag on others. And so you have to form yourself into something yeah. and you have to be willing to expend energy to, to reach that point. And I do want to end on that positive that you mentioned, you know, the win, there are wins for men to be a man, to be masculine. Can you tell me a little bit about that winning at life? Well, winning is what we obviously want, you know, yes. we, want, we always want to win. You know, you go play a game, you want to win. You you you, you go in a race, you want to win. Um, it, it's that that's, I guess, what motivates us. Oh. But the reality is that you can't always win. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But I think that, um, OK, winning is nice. It's it's gratifying. But what do you do after you win? You celebrate. Oh. Do you think very hard about why you won? Probably not. <laughs> uh, see, I I got this from my from my uh, from my hedge fund experiences, you know, because I had I had times when I was very successful, but I also had projects that failed completely. And, uh, well, believe me, when your project fails completely and you lost a whole bunch of money and uh, you're feeling down, it's a wonderful way to focus your mind mm. because you go over everything. Why did I fail? What could I have done mm. better? Uh, you know, that process, you, when you're making money or when you're winning at a game, you're happy. You don't, you don't think a whole lot about, you, you know, yeah. you won, but maybe you were lucky. Or you had a you had a good trade. Maybe you were just lucky. Maybe you were not just clever. But you think like, yeah, you know, and you're celebrating, and you think yes. like, oh, now I'm going to take all my friends out for dinner and, <laughs> and celebrate. When you fail, then there's a lot of introspection. So, <laughs> winning is good. Yes. But coping it with failure is essential. It's Ooh. very important. So you have winning to... is good, but failure is essential. Well, coping with failure, learning how to cope with failure. Ooh. Because that process of coping with failure is the 
is the teacher, the teaching moment in life. You know, uh, that's when you process a lot of information. That's when you uh, think about many, many ways that you can improve yourself. And that's way where you get a lot of determination to not let that happen again, that motivates you to become a better person. Maybe the winning is how you feel about yourself from these experiences when you worked hard uh in a way yes not not the same way as, way as not the same way as winning then and there you know we just won the game the the referee whistled right. and it's done and we we won but in this sense as you say i think if i understand correctly it's it's seeing that a long sequence of actions and decisions are actually moving you ahead in life and then you feel a sense of accomplishment and you you reckon, okay, I, I I think I'm kind of winning at this game of life. Oh, For now, unless right. somebody unless somebody declares another pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. The goal always is to be winning at life. You know, we do want this too. So, Alex, for the masculinity crisis, any last thoughts? Ah, any last thoughts? Um I always, uh, I always feel the need to end it on a positive note, but I think that everything we discussed was kind of on a positive note. No, it was, yes, it wasn't it. So I'm, I'm now pulling a blank, but uh, I would say, you know, uh, if anybody's listening, okay, yeah, very important. Never lie. Oh, never lie. And that's a okay so this is something that i learned in life uh maybe in my 30s mm -hmm. uh it's extremely important it's very difficult for me to explain yes. this but um i think that every time you lie you undermine yourself oh wow wow you know and wow. i came across this you know tucker carlson not exactly a person who has a lot of quotes attributed to him but i read this quote by him and he said like the more you tell the truth, the more powerful you are. And I thought, oh my God, I think that's right. I think there's something to it. And so here's, you know, like, here's how I came around to this because um, at some point in my life, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll tell this story. Uh, I, uh, I watched this film called Kingdom of Heaven by Ridley Scott. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend it. It's a great film. It's a really, really good film. And in, in one scene of this film, uh, Liam Neeson, who is uh, like an old knight, uh, initiates his son into his, into his order. And as a part of the initiation, he slaps him on the face. No, no, no. He says, tell the truth, always tell the truth, even if it leads to your death. And then he slaps him on the face, and this is so you always remember it. And I... You know, like I thought like, oh, wow, tell the truth, even if it leads to your death. And, uh, you know, at first I kind of thought like, that's radical. That's, yeah, it's kind of big. It's, 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 it's maybe even impossible, maybe it's stupid. I don't know. Really weird. But actually that, that whole thought, that concept wouldn't leave me alone. It just kept coming back and back and back and back. And I kind of, I kind of found myself forced to think about it. And, and then at one point, here's what happened to me, you know, like I, like many people, I would give great, I would give great importance to being punctual as a question of, as a matter of respect for other people and their time. So if you and I decide to meet up somewhere and you say, let's meet at one, I'm not going to show up at 30, uh, 30 minutes past one and leave you there waiting, right? Yes. I, I should turn up there at one. Well, I actually, in my life, I always found it very, very difficult to actually be punctual, you know? <laughs> and so I would turn up late 5, 10, 15 minutes. It was just, you know, uh, the way I was. And then I would turn up with some excuse. Oh, you know, the traffic jam yes. or, you know, like I was just leaving my office and then my boss called me. I couldn't just, you know, and, and something like that. But very often I invented the story, you know, like mm -hmm. sometimes I legitimately was late. Other times right. I invented a story. Mm -hmm. And then it hit me that, you know, like I was actually reconciling my self-image of a respectful person because I give importance to punctuality, that I was propping up that image on 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 lies, on falsehoods. Ooh. 
I was lying to maintain that image, you know? Wow. It was, you know, maybe it was innocent enough, but it was kind of disturbing because it's it's like a, it's 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 like a layer of slime on your on your character. And I thought like, well, ouch, that doesn't yeah, that's not good. Mm. And then I realized that if I um if I refuse to lie, if mm. I suggest like, no, I'm just gonna tell the truth. And if I turn up, you know, like you and I are meeting, and I turn up thirty minutes late, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, gonna have to either tell you that I'm a disrespectful schmuck who's late for no good reason, or I'm going to have to actually make an effort to be there on time, right? So I realized that this commitment to tell the truth actually is important because it'll keep you from doing things you would have to lie about after. Do you understand? Yes. And so committing to being truthful actually obliges you to be a better person. And it can actually make a world a better place because imagine if our politicians didn't lie to us and take us to wars on false premises. And imagine if our bankers didn't lie to us and draw us into into mortgages that are unpayable and we end up losing our houses. And imagine if uh, spouses uh, told truth to one another and then they didn't cheat on one another and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And I think like, yeah, actually, if everybody committed to telling the truth, the world would be a better place. And I think that world definitely can take some improvements that we could do. And then going back to it all, yes. I, I think that what Tucker said, Tucker Carlson said about it, that the more you tell the truth, the more powerful you become Ooh. is actually true. I, I think that there's a lot to it. So my advice to your viewers and listeners and to anybody, uh, you know, generally in life is uh, always tell the truth. And then, you know, again, you know, sometimes understandably we're not dealing with the truth truth we're dealing with personal interpretations of truth right yeah and we could be legitimately wrong about something and then we're not lying we're just wrong right that's okay <laughs> uh, then you know when you when uh, uh, when you're saying jokes when you use humor then you deliberately say things that are untrue because you know you're trying to make somebody laugh you know but I think that it's it, it's at times when we are tempted to deceive somebody mm-hmm. that it's important to be truthful. And so, yeah, that's, you know, tell the truth and never give up. Always tell the truth, never give up. That would wow. be my, uh, my uh, closing thoughts for this uh, pleasant chat. Tell the truth, masculinity that gives you power. Thank you so much, Alex Craner. Thank you very much for having me, Rachel.